tata jingi du wolo ka tiro le du ni tata du la wu du la wolo ka tiro le du ni tata hada matilu ya wolo ka tiro le du an iya ye kuno le yo nande kuno mo tanye afai ho kuno le yo kuno le yo Tata du la wa du la, si kuno di biti la, ali na za no kiro ni na kuno dia, ye na kuno duli kuno du tita, ye na kuno le kuno du tarami, ye na. Very much. Welcome and good evening, everybody. We are along the road band, and that was Kadiali Coyote on uh, the Cora, singing a song about uh, freedom and birds. Um, yeah, Kadiali, that's a, Kadiali. was a song about freedom. So it's Kuno means birds. So yeah, uh, it's a song about freedom. If the birds can fly wherever they want, we can do so. It's lyrics are saying, "Auntie, catch me a bird." Uh, Blackbird with white wings. Why don't we go and find freedom in bird's land? So yeah, so somewhere freedom. And we're going to play now uh, a, a, on the along the road theme. Um, about a hundred or so years ago, Bella Bartok travelled to um, Hungary, as it was then, Romania, Turkey. He travelled all around the place, and he collected tunes. Uh, which he transcribed on a, uh, which he recorded. You can actually listen to them on Spotify. Um, though Spotify wasn't around in those days, they were recorded on wax cylinders, and, and the stuff he took was really big piece of machinery. Um, and he recorded some songs, and then he took them back to the uh, concert halls and turned them into chamber music and elevated them to high art status. And he's got a lot to say about that. Um, and then sort of a process a hundred years later is people are taking those tunes that he originally wrote and, and re-interpreting interpreting them as tr traditional and, if you like, folk music. And we're going to do a bit of that now. We're going to play um, a doina, which is um, a traditional tune. Um, this was originally, I actually heard this being played on a flute by a boy in Transylvania. Um, there's a thunderstorm coming down, I'm sorry. <laughs> and <laughs> Transylvania, oh dear. Anyway, um, <laughs> and, and this is a lament with a connection to nature, so it's following on the theme of birds. Um, and then that's going to be followed by um, a Bulgarian dance. And then some bagpipe music, some by Bartok and some collected. And then we're going to finish off the set with another along the road piece which I'm sure Henry will tell you all about when we finished, uh, written by Schubert, called Earl King. Thank you.
That was Misha Milova Abado on double bass. And Kuljit Bamra on the tablet. And Henrietta Hill on the viola. Now we're going to play some bagpipe music. Thank you. 
We'd like to invite Eileen, who will be with us shortly, but we, she's also with us now. And oh, great. <laughs> um, and Eileen has been working with a group of storytellers for the last um, long time, making stories. But uh, you're going to accompany us in this piece, uh, which is a poem by Charlotte Mew. And it's also about spring. I so liked spring last year because you were here. The thrushes too. Because it was these you so like to hear. I so liked you. Thing. I'll not think of you, but I'll like the spring because it's simply spring as the thrushes do. Rushes do. Once there was a man called Sam and he lived in a place where everybody played music and sang songs and told stories and he loved to listen but he'd never felt like he really belonged because he didn't have a story of his own to tell.
And one day, Sandy started to go for a walk. He would go to a place where he could be himself and be at peace. The sun was shining and the sky was blue. And Sam walked down towards the woodlands. And as he walked through, the sunlight come down through the branches and leaves. And as he carried on, he come to a clearing. And in the clearing was an oak tree that he sat down beside. And soon, Sam slowly drifted off until he went into a deep sleep. Sam woke up and the wind was blowing so hard from east to west and thunder started crackling, the storm started brewing and it was so, he was so confused. All of a sudden, it started raining, blah, 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 blah. Rain started falling down and he began getting wet. Uh, he was so lost, he was trying to find his way. It was beginning to get cold. The wind was blowing, he was turning his back to protect himself from the wind. And then all of a sudden he saw a light and he decided to follow the light. And as he followed the light, he went through the storm until he came to a cottage. And he knocked on the cottage. And slowly the door opened. And there he stepped back. Because there in front of him was this little old lady with grey hair running down to her knees and a face so yellow that her teeth was yellow and black. But yet there was a sparkle in her eye. And Sam looked past her and he could see people were playing music, people were having fun and more inviting he could see the light coming from an open fire and candles were lit on the table. So Sam entered the cottage. Sam went in and found himself a place by the fire and dried himself off. And then the little old lady, she turned around and she addressed everyone and she said, tonight is a special night. Tonight we have a storytelling competition and whoever tells the most incredible story will win this golden plate. And everyone chattered and everyone was excited and then everything went quiet. And the old lady said, who has a story? I have a story. When I was a little girl, my dad used to take us to an event in Nigeria called Ayo Festival. Ayo Festival is a prominent cultural and traditional Yoruba festival. This, it's like a carnival. People come from all over Nigeria to, to watch this festival. Even the kings, the judges, people in high ranks in Nigeria, they're part of this festival. I used to enjoy it so much. In this festival, they used to sing, one of, this is one of the songs they sing. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, Baba Sawa, so if you go lose it, I want to let someone in there hold it. I miss it so much. I wish I could see more of it. This is the end of my story. My name is John and I have a story. When I was a little boy, my dad used to bring me hunting rabbits and he'd bring their ferrets and their nets, we'd put them over the borough. 
and she was just waiting then on time. And then that night, we, when we all laid down, we laid down with a full stomach. That's my story. Thank you for listening. And I have a story. Along the road, I met a woman, and she told me that she turned into a beautiful blue parrot, and she had flown across the sea, and there she had ended up in a forest, a wild forest where she met a pygmy tribe, and they had love in their hearts, and they knew how to be with nature. They could hear when the ants were coming and they knew to step aside. And then she stayed with them a little while and then she flew back across the sea and she transformed back into a woman and she told me the story, which is how I am telling you the story today. And all along, Sam's heart was beating. His heart was beating because it was his turn to say his story. Everyone turned his, their eyes towards Sam, waiting him to say his story. His hands were sweating and his knees, you know, were trembling because he didn't have a story. He was so confused. Then the old woman turned to Sam and told him, well, Sam, it's your turn. You've got to tell us your story. And then Sam said, well, I don't have a story. I can't tell a story. His heart was still beating. And then the old woman told him, Sam, well, you either have to tell us a story or you have to take up a challenge. And then Sam said, well, I'll take up the challenge. Yeah. Then the old woman told him, Sam, then what you need to do is you, you need to walk out of the cottage into the woods, down the hill. You'll come across a pier. And into the pier, there will be a rope a tied there. And at the end of the rope, there will be something there you have to go and get it and bring it back to us. So Sam decided to walk out of the cottage. And as he walked out of the cottage, he closed the door and he leaned back. He saw that the storm had gone and the full moon was up in the sky. So he headed down to the woodlands and carried on down the hill. And there at the bottom was the pond with the moonlight shining away on the water. And as he went along the pier, he had to be careful because it was all green and slimy. And he came across what he knew was the rope. But yet he could hear frogs around him. An owl up in a tree and as he pulled the rope slowly and slowly towards him suddenly the frog jumped up on him and he fell back into the water into the darkness Sam woke up and found himself along the shore of a pond he was wet he was tired he was confused he was in a completely different place. As he lifted his head up, he saw a man and a woman approach him. The man was very helpful. He spoke to him in a language he didn't understand. The man asked him, Oh, kaka, unafanya nini hapa? He didn't understand the language. And then, within a minute, a woman came who happened to be the man's sister also spoke to him in a different language. All she was trying to do is to help Sam. Well, Sam was helpless. He needed help though, but he felt like these people were very welcoming and willing to help him. So Sam decided to go with them and Sam became part of the community, a different community, he did different things. Sam akasafiri katika inchi zingine, akawa mtu ambaye anatambulika katika jamii akakuwa anaenda kanisa nao kila Jumapili akakuwa Jumamosi anaenda kuendesha baiskeli na marafiki zake 
And then one day, he fell in love with a woman in the community. And they had three sons. Some even took his sons to the best school in the community that he wanted. His sons were educated. They made friends. And years went by, and years and days went by. And time kept going. And then one day, Sam decided to walk into the woods. So he decided to take a walk. And he came across a pond which he recognized. And he said, I recognize this pond. So he went there, sat close to the pond. As he was reflecting upon his life, and years had gone, many years had passed by. All of a sudden, Sam heard some noise coming from the woods behind him. And there were footsteps. Somebody was running. Somebody was running. As he looked behind, he saw one of the sun who came running and jumped into the pond and disappeared. Within no minute, the second son came fast, ran, ran, jumped into the pond, disappeared. And the third one came, did the same, jumped into the pond and disappeared. The wife, the friends, the same. Well, he was so confused. What Sam decided to do, he jumped into the pond himself and everything went dark. And Sam woke up. The first thing that he noticed was that full moon up in the sky and the last raindrops falling off the leaves. But then Sam realized, what just happened? Where was I? And he looked down at his hands and realized, these weren't old man's hands, these were young hands. And then he looked down into the reflection of the water and he saw what he thought was going to be grey hair, but it was his hair, dark and black, like it was when he was young. And Sam started to get frightened, wondering what happened. And then he started to panic and he started to run. And he ran up that hill as fast as he could. And he ran through the woodlands and he came across the cottage. And he ran in, slamming the door open and entered the cottage. And everybody stared at him. And the old woman said, Sam, Sam, did you th bring the thing at the end of the rope? And he said, no, you don't understand. And he started to explain and she said, slow down, tell us what happened. And so Sam told his story. And when he had finished, some people smiled and some people cried, but everybody clapped. And then the old woman said, Sam, that was the most incredible story. I think we can all agree that you win the storytelling prize. And from that day on, Sam always had a story to tell. Katika safari hiyo, ungependa kukutana na nani katika maisha Sam? Well, what I just said is, along the road, who would you have loved to meet? And what is your story? Thank you very much. It's a real honor to um, work with not only amazing musicians, but also people who've never been on stage before. And I think that's a courageous uh, thing to do. So I think another round of applause for the... <laughs> uh, this next piece is a piece that I wrote in collaboration with a drummer called Davide Giovannini. And it's called Road to Freedom. Uh, and it marks a significant point in my life, personally, when um, I had a, a very big turning point. Um, I went from having a nine-to-five job to playing music full-time, 
um, many people assume that I've been playing all my life, but actually uh, I was brought up in a very strict Indian family and my father would always say to me, you will be a doctor or an engineer. And I used to say, yeah, Dad, I'll be a doctor or an engineer. Uh, and uh, when I, by the time I was about 17 or 18, my bedroom was cluttered with tape recorders, samplers, and, you know, I don't know if you know what tape recorders are, some of you are as old as I am, but anyway, things that go like that. And I was looping them and joining them with tape and playing along with them. And then my dad would knock on the door, you know, my bedroom door and say, it's just a hobby. I said, it's just a hobby, Dad, honestly, I promise. But I really had a dream to um, go into f music full time. It never really, um, I never really thought it was possible. It was a dream. So I ended up uh, pleasing my dad and became a civil engineer. So I, I, did, I got a degree in civil engineering, as you can tell, not. Uh, and um, I ended up working for Richmond Council. And, and what I did there was, for many years, design speed humps. <laughs> so, um, yeah, don't, I'm not to blame for any of your exhaust pipes breaking. But anyway, um, so I, uh, roads have been in my life for quite a while, as you can imagine. Uh, and there was one point when um, I really thought, is, is my life about speed humps? Um, and, you know, I know I, I wish that it wasn't. But anyway, I thought when I die, we're like, well, they bury me in a speed hump. You know, I said, sort of crazy. So I, I eventually plucked up the courage. It was a big turning point in my life. And then I went to f music full time. And my whole career changed. Within weeks, I got a call from Andrew Lloyd Webber's company to be in a show called Bombay Dreams. And it was almost like destiny was waiting, you know, to happen in a way. So this, this piece is quite important. It's called Road to Freedom, and it really is about, um, I think, having the courage to sort of follow your dreams. I, I, I'm also, um, I, I won't talk too long, so just try and keep awake, but I, um, I'm also someone who really believes that, um, like, whoever created human beings wouldn't give them the ability to dream if it couldn't come true. That'd be like a real sad trick to do, wouldn't it? <laughs> so I really believe that if you have a dream, I, I really believe it can come true. Anyway, road to freedom. Thank you.
Good evening. Um, hi, everyone. Um, we're now going to play the first of two pieces that I've written um, and then arrange for this ensemble. Um, this is a piece taken from a piece I originally wrote for clarinet quintet, so that's clarinet and string quartet. Um, and that piece was called Three, um, Three Road Songs, so I figured it'd be appropriate to take a couple of pieces out of that for this program. This particular piece that I've arranged is called Red Path, and it is, I guess, inspired by indigenous tribes in the Amazon rainforest and um, a kind of a specific tradition of running rituals called the Red Path, which is all about um, uniting the, the sort of prophecy of uniting the North and the South, so North, the cultures from, and traditions from North America with South America. And, um, and yeah, so this was originally written for clarinet quintet, and I'm going to play it with Joe and Henry, just the three of us, so you have to imagine an extra violin and a clarinet and no double bass. Oh, and a cello. Otherwise, it's exactly the same.
So we're heading back to Bartok territory now. Um, I'm going to play a, a very short sketch by a wonderful composer who um, wanted to travel to where Bartok was based. And she wanted to study with another Moravian composer called Janacek. Um, sadly, she didn't study with him, but she did get a travel scholarship to Prague. So I will play a sketch number three, it's called, but I think it's a bit of a lullaby. And you'll hear some of Bartok's um, folk melodies in, in this little piece. Um, and then um, I'll be joined uh, for a duet uh, by Bartok, um, which is a dance based on a region. Um, and then the tune afterwards, I'm sure a lot of you will know. So uh, this is Elizabeth McConkie to start.
How about it for Joe on the violin? And Henry on the viola. Since, since I've started it. Um, Kulje on the tabla. And Katia Ali on the kora. Um, we've almost come to the end of the concert. I think we've got two pieces left. Uh, the next piece we're going to play is another one of mine that's also from that same collection of pieces I wrote for clarinet quintet called Road Songs. This piece is called Staircase Music, and uh, it's a little dedication to a band that I was at university with that are kind of responsible for me starting the bass almost by accident. Um, this band was called the Staircase Band, and they, the, the band doesn't really exist anymore, but it, when it existed, it um, played loads of really fun Balkan music, and that was kind of my introduction to playing the double bass. And um, so this piece is kind of stylistically a little bit like all of that music we used to play, and also, I guess, sounds a little bit like someone running up and down the stairs really fast when they may or may not trip over. We'll see. So here's Staircase Music.
We are going to play our last song for you. Once again, Kurji, Misha, Henry and Joe. And give it to the sound behind you. So this one is called Fondinke. It's a song about uh, the youth, youngsters, the future. So Fondinke for you.
sorry to sing you with us. Fundinke together. Uh huh. Fundinke. Thank you. 